This recipe is called Instant Pot Texas Style Chili. And I assembled all the ingredients on my, I have a real long stainless steel table here in my kitchen right now. So um, this is some avocado oil that I'm going to brown in. Some garlic, lots of garlic, onions. We have some beef. Uh, this was a flank steak that I cut up to be resemble um, stew meat. It calls for either a plebano or a green pepper, either one. Uh, fire roasted tomatoes, which I found. I was lucky enough today in the grocery store to be able to get some of those. It calls for a half a cup of coffee and some tomato paste, kosher salt, and a mixture of cinnamon and smoked paprika and some cumin and chili powder and, believe it or not, some cocoa. And then the last thing it's gonna have is some butternut squash as well as a little bit of lime juice. So I'm gonna get everything started here over in my Instant Pot and we'll start working on that. So, being in the West or Southwest, I'd be wearing a hat, right? So let's do this. We're going to add the avocado oil into the bottom of the Instant Pot. Instant Pot's been heating. It's on the saute portion right down here. And I'm going to add my onion, my peppers, I'm going to add my garlic, salt, your tomato paste, and then all of our seasoning. That had cinnamon and smoked paprika and cumin. And I'm gonna continue to stir that for about three minutes until those vegetables start to soften. And man, does that smell good. Is to, once this has, these, you can tell they've softened a lot and lots of steam coming up. So we're gonna add the meat and we're going to add our tomatoes and the coffee for a little bit of moisture, and then we're gonna close it up. So I'm gonna add my meat. I like this little tool so I don't have to touch it. There we go. tell you to coat all of the meat with the spices and the vegetables. It's hard with all the steam coming up to see it very well, but it looks great. Add two cans of the, these are fire roasted tomatoes that have chilies in them. And half a cup of coffee. I had to drink the other half. <laughs> Once this is all stirred up, we're going to close it up. Oh yeah, this looks awesome. So real Texas chili doesn't have beans. Because Texas, because chili is chili con carne, and it should be meat and peppers. So you want to make sure that this is sealed. So this is a pressure cooker, and I'm going to turn it on to manual. And we're gonna cook for a total of 35 minutes. So eventually, it'll come up to the right temperature. Uh-oh, what did I do? Oh. oh, that wasn't right. All right, let's try this again. Nope. Close it off, try it again. There we go. I think I hit the wrong button there. One, two, three, four. There we go. 35 minutes. When it gets to the temperature that it needs to be inside, then it'll start counting backwards. So the steam is going to build up in there and it's on. It knows it's ready to go, but it's going to take a little bit before that happens. I will um, vent it and show you how to do that when we get there. So the timer just went off about two minutes ago it needs to vent the this is like a uh, there's lots of pressure underneath here so i need to vent this 
You don't ever do this with your hand. You're going to use a wooden spoon to do this. I could naturally let the steam go down and the pressure go down, but the recipe wants you to speed this process up. So I'm going to do this. Hold tight. You ready? So it finished venting. It took about five minutes to vent completely when I forced it and had it early. So now I'm going to unlock the top and it lets you know. Boy, that smells delicious. And I'm going to turn it off and turn it back to saute. And for uh, five minutes, we're going to saute. You will let me. Well, maybe it won't. Well, I'll set my timer. But I'm going to add butternut squash. It's already diced. It comes this way. It's so much easier to buy it already done instead of buying a fresh one because they're hard to cut. I'm going to add that, and I'm going to also add some salt. And that's it for that. And I'm going to stir this up. And it's going to cook for about five more minutes. I'll set my timer. So the chili is done. I've taken it out. It's finished up cooking all of the butternut squash. And now it's time to get it served. Before I do that, I like to top off this particular chili with slices of some avocado. Usually a lot of chili I prefer having um, onions, cheese, and sour cream, but well, we've kind of given up a lot of those things. So I'm gonna cut my avocado in half. I have a special tool for doing just that. And then it has three little blades in here that I'm gonna push on there and it helps me pop that seed out. It's like a pit. And then it has a nice cut area here. I'm gonna turn this around. These little, this is kind of like your um, hard boiled egg slicer or a mushroom slicer that comes with it, ready to cut even pieces at the same time. I'm just gonna slice that through there. I have to push on there because that wasn't very overly ripe. But that'll be great to serve with. We'll put that on top of our chili. Get one. Oh, that looks awesome. So this is celebrating the South and the Southwest. Put a little bit of avocado on top. And if you want, you could also add some chips. I have some grain free since we don't have grain for some people at this house as well as regular chips and you can crunch them up and add a little bit more zest to, to your chili.